Hi, my name is X Ann Kasperzak. I'm the Vice President of Product Management here at CSI. CSI offers one of the most advanced technologies in the industry for anti-money laundering and fraud. Today, we're going to talk about Chasing Shadows, the crossover between fraud and AML in modern finance. According to payments.com, the latest news and analytics in payments, retail, fintech, financial services, and digital economy, 43% of US financial institutions reported increased fraudulent transactions this year. I'm sure that doesn't surprise anyone. Fraud continues to be the largest driver of money laundering activity in terms of scope of activity and magnitude in illicit fund proceeds, generating billions of dollars annually. Payments also recently published, increasing fraud heightens new, a, a new need for better technologies. In this study, payments, the payment study, bank, law, bank losses due to fraud and various payment types, would, it wouldn't surprise you to know that digital fraud rates have more than doubled. Same day ACH have increased by 35%. The increased speed of payment transactions contributed to these dynamic increases in digital payment fraud. Obviously, this is not a shock that fraudsters would focus their efforts on channels of which the funds transfer the fastest. Increased speed of payments is one of the top challenges for financial institutions, along with complex regulatory requirements and loss of customers and revenue due to fraud and financial crimes. With the ever-changing environment, regulatory, geopolitical, economical, financial crime, innovation, fintech and payment companies need to ensure they are protecting their customers by combating fraud, money laundering, and related financial crimes on their platforms. The crossover between fraud and AML is a tale as old as time. That is supercharged with fraudsters exploding with new opportunities. How does a financial institution get a step ahead to, my, to mitigate fraud and minimize laundering of stolen funds? Well, 66% of financial institutions are using machine learning and automated intelligence. Who's done it? Well, you know, maybe this picture used to surprise us a few years ago to we would say, you know, the guy in the middle is definitely the fraudster. But we all know that sophisticated fraud has increased. I think the movie, the 2002 movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio definitely kind of changed the, the face of what a criminal looks like in his check fraud and identity check, identity fraud um, story, if you will. But catch me if you can, the movie sheds light on concept of identity theft and check fraud. And during the first quarter of 2023 alone, the Federal Trade Commission reported nearly $2 billion in losses. Check fraud remains extremely prevalent attack vector against financial institutions, making up 60% of the fraud attempts against U.S. banks. Each of these on the screen certainly have been successful in tricking and scamming many of us across the nation. Walking hand in hand, uh, Amber Wallace states, fraud is really using deception or dishonesty to generate illegal funds and proceeds, right? Money laundering then is the proceeds that come after that solicited funds of illegal funds. So, what can we do? Chasing Shadows continues with a new data published on October 6th of this year from the Federal Trade Commission showing that scams originated on social media have become very prevalent. Social media has, is now accounting for $2.7 billion in reported losses since 2021, more than any other contact method at all. The FTC took a deep dive into social media scams. What kind of scams are actually causing us to fall for them? And reportedly, the most frequently reported were the online shopping scams. How many of you have actually ordered something on a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad and you didn't receive what you expected? I know I have, right? 
frustrating to get this cheap little token in the mail instead of the dress that I thought I was going to order. I didn't even take time to report it as fraud. But for those who do report it as fraud, it adds up. And now we have 44% of the fraud due to online shopping scams representing that 2.7 billion, so 40%. According to Merchant Cost Consulting, consumers are not the only victims. Online sellers are also primary targets for fraudsters. So the inverse of what we were just talking about, instead of us getting scammed, the merchants getting scammed. In the US alone, there has been an increase of 140% in credit card fraud attacks against e-commerce merchants in the past three years. US card fraud is expected to increase and exceed 12.5 billion by 2025. According to the recent projections, it estimates that the total losses from credit card fraud worldwide will actually eclipse 43 billion within the next few years. This figure is up from 9.8 billion in 2011, 32.4 billion in 2021 to the estimated 43 billion in the years to come. So fraudsters are just getting smarter, using better tools to outsmart us. So how do we how do we fight against this? Because this increase in card fraud represents 4.5 times over the last 15 years. The check fraud is up 84% from 250 cases to 460,000 cases in 2022. Criminals are really smart. They're now using Telegram to recruit walkers to walk into the banks and cash these checks for them. These statistics have made it more important than ever to leverage a payment screening solution that can perform payment screening to ensure that you're compliant with anti-money laundering regulations and requirements, as well as detect potential fraudulent transactions in real time. A solution that empowers your fraud analysts to write rules on the fly, the ability for them to go in in a no code rules environment and literally make changes so that they can adjust the way the fraudsters are coming at them. We all know fraudsters are like water, right? They find a way Whatever roadblocks we put up, they find a way. So how does your team combat against that type of fraud? The ability to write those rules in real time, you don't need a SQL coder to do that. You just need a really smart fraud analyst or a really smart BSA analyst to just understand the patterns that are going on and then a place the fraud rules in the system or the AML rules, and we're here to help you. The constant battle. New fraud schemes directly correlate to an uptick in money laundering. We all know that, right? ACAMS reported in 2011, criminal activity related to fraud generates money that needs to be laundered. Fast forward now to April 28th of 2023, Homeland Security Investigations actually partnered with ACAMS and issued an alert outlining anti-money laundering red flags and compliance guidance associated with the so-called pig book drain, a rise in global fraud schemes that have targeted victims by earning their confidence, their trust over the course of weeks or months before soliciting money for fraudulent crypto asset investments. If you don't know much about pig butchering, and I'm sure you do because most of you are all in the BSA fraud environment, right? You work on these things every day, but um, it's it's crazy the amount of time and trust the fraudsters are placing to ensure that they can build the trust with the consumer and have them, hey, you know, deposit a thousand dollars and invest in cryptocurrency and they see this huge growth, right? Just fantastic earnings return. And so they talk them in a, a little bit more and a little bit more, which is where the pig butchering term comes from, is fattening the pig so that you can butcher it, right? Just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until the consumer now believes they're getting such a fantastic return that they mortgage their home. They literally take out their 401k, all of their investments, and they're putting everything they have in this crypto, seeing the returns right there on the screen in front of them, but it doesn't really happen. 
At the very end, what happens? The fraudster walks away with all of their money. The alert was issued as part of the Cornerstone Outreach Project. Such a gruesome name for the fraud scam, isn't it? But it really started as a scam in China and has been prevalent in the US for several years. The term is used to resemble the practice of fattening the hog before slaughtering it. Victims invested in supposedly legitimate virtual currency investments opportunities, and then they're conned out of their money. So what can you do? What can we do? If fraudsters are maximizing their efforts with sophisticated resources, do you think they're using automated intelligence, machine learning? Do you think they're collaborating across their industry networks of fraudsters? We, you know, we learn that they're in high rises with office buildings, recruiting people to sit there and scam you and using the latest technology they can. You know they're using sophisticated AI and machine learning to just turn through the systems and take the most they possibly can. Of course they are. So why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we be providing you with the best tools that we can possibly provide you? Let's take some advice from the industry leaders. Donna Murphy, the deputy controller at the OCC, um, stated at ACON, ACAMS Hollywood, guard against complacency, do something about it. Kieran Beer, the chief analyst at ACAMS, he said, don't cut back on your anti-money laundering efforts. That's not the right place to cut back. We need to make a change. We want you to know that Salent did a study of 17 platforms and they wanted to see which one had the best advanced technology. They also studied two other, they gave two other awards as well. One was breadth of fun functionality and the other was customer base and support. Uh, how well do you support your customers, right? But I think the most prestigious award is Solent's Advanced Technology Award. Again, just released this year after looking at 17 platforms to understand who has the most advanced technology to help you fight against the fraudsters. <coughs> and that's the technology that CSI offers you, the award-winning technology of the Advanced Technology Award. All the data in one place. That's really the crossover between AML and fraud. As we've rolled out the technology, we've listened to our customers and we've said, what is really helping you the most? And they said, not only is this ability to see my customer in a 360 degree view, but the ability to look at the transactions differently. We're not account alert transaction reviewing. We're able to review these transactions from a consolidated alert, the ability to look at 10 total transactions impacting your customer or possibly your bank for a loss, rather than every single account at a time. So it's relationship monitoring, not account-based monitoring. <coughs> and I think, pardon me, one, one of the use cases in the 360 degree view really is the customer journey, minimizing investigation times, improving the departmental efforts. Um, there's an article written by Douglas Stevenson, the author of an ACAMS relationship based monitoring. And I thought he did a really nice job with that article. It's available on the ACAMS website. It says, it, if you have a lack in holistic view of your customers, and it's forcing you into an account-centric monitoring, then you are broken, both quantitatively and qualitatively. Given that, I would submit that your transaction monitoring system is ineffective as currently deployed. Poor data quality is the root cause cited for banks that do not have a holistic view of their customers, causing two limitations. I know you know them well, Richard Stocks from Global Chief Technology Officer of Financial Crimes at Pitney, Pitney Bowes stated, one of the bad behaviors is simply missed. 
So the two limitations are delivering you false positives and delivering you misses. The bad behavior is simply missed. When your team is focused on thousands and thousands and thousands of account-based alerts, they don't have time to focus on the consolidated relationship-based alerts that allow them to sufficiently complete and compile a really sufficient SAR. The suspicious activity reports are important. And we all know with the AML Act of 2020, even, even the regulators are saying, please give us better information. Give us more complete suspicious activity reports. Start to use the latest technology so that you can give us the best data so that we can all work together to fight this fight. Fighting crime in real time. Despite compromising such a large portion of crime against individuals, according to the statistics, only 1% of law enforcement is focused on tackling economic crime. How can institutions protect themselves? Traditionally, financial institutions accept the risk. Loss, they lose money and they do their best to set rules to alert that fraud is happening. Now, we can stop fraud the moment it happens, minimizing losses and decreasing money laundering and decreasing the fraud that impacts your customers and your bank. So why hasn't everyone adopted AM and machine learning? If it's this great, why is there a bit, a bit of a slow adoption? <clears throat> I really like this particular diagram because I think it really calls out the difference. If you walk through the ACAMS um, exhibit hall, every single vendor in there says, we can reduce your false positives by 70% and we can apply AI and machine learning, right? So how do you sort out the differences? How do you sort the differences between what's really going to work for your financial institution and what is just being shown? And one, one of, So on this slide, what is the level of AI machine learning adoption? And you can see it's kind of slow to get fully adopted. We all know that. And on the right, it's why. What is the biggest hurdle? Why is it slow to adopt? 43% responded, hey, the model explainability and interpretability is a challenge for us. Let's focus on that for a minute, right? It means that not only is the analyst saying, I don't even know why it scored that high. What's going on with the machine learning and the automated intelligence? How do I decipher what to do next? It, so it becomes a black box and challenging for your analyst to really make sense of what the alerts mean. Secondly, auditors come in and they say, well, why did you make that decision? Why did the system auto close this? Can you tell me why the model? gave you this type of response. And if you can't answer that, right, the auditors aren't going to be satisfied and then you're not gonna be satisfied with your exam. So the Advanced Technology Award that Solent provided to the technology that DSI is rolling out is, has a patent pending on the ability to give you plain English sentences are the rules that are delivered to you. And the reason that's so important is because you can literally, let's, let's take an example. Tom Jones, his deposit for $3,000 is out of pattern. Well, what's that mean to me? As soon as I get that as an analyst, I might have to go dig through the system, figure out why it's out of pattern, look at all of his old transactions. I spend hours doing some research, right? Or I have a highly explainable relationship balance approach and I have the ability now to say, the, the message for that score says, Tom Jones has a $3,000 deposit that is out of pattern, but it also is compared to his average deposits have been $1,500 max. Now you have the exact story. All the research and time that your team would have taken is done. You no longer have to 
go spend all that time researching. The, the, the plain English rules can simply be even copied and used into your SAR reporting. So it gives your analysts the ability to work faster, focus on what's most important, still reducing false positives in, in the case that you need it to, as well as providing your auditors with that model explainability and interpretability that has been a challenge for others. So use a system with explainability. Building explainability into automated intelligence for financial crime detection models is crucial to ensuring transparency and accountability in the decision-making process. Explainability can be built into AI models by including natural language narratives, decision probabilities, verbalized decision criteria, and contextual valuations, as well as by allowing your investigators to give feedback. These factors give investigators the contextual information they need to make good case decisions. Your BSA team shouldn't need to be data scientists to understand the narratives. The model needs to offer human language, just plain English. It'll increase your efficiencies, reduce your false positives, it will save you time, and that saves you money. <clears throat> Model governance and model validation is an important component. Traceability is a key element of model governance. Traceability means recording information like who trained the data, what data was it trained on and with, how is it tested, and what data was tested with it. This allows your operators to understand the decision-making process of the AI model. Explainable models leave an audit trail for every decision allowing operators to identify and fix errors, improve their accuracy, and ensure that the model is fair and unbiased. Again, key to your examiners. Tooling also plays a critical role in implementing and enforcing model governance processes. With the increasing complexity and scale of machine learning models, it is practically impossible to manually manage and monitor all aspects of model governance. You need to set good KPIs that are relevant and establish the KPIs. And when you monitor, make sure you monitor over time. In summary, think of the terms, the value of relationship monitoring, not just transaction monitoring system. Maybe it should be called an RMS system, relationship managing system, instead of a TMS system, right? Transactions do provide the foundation of a good story. However, they're incapable of telling the entire story. For new technology, don't be complacent. Listen to our leaders in the industry and fight the fight. Holistic view is the future. I want to end with Doug, Doug Stevenson, again, from the article I mentioned. He's a VP and global head of security. And his, his final statement in his article is beautiful. The information flowing through our financial institution contains the information needed to identify bad actors in our society, the ones who are filling our streets with drugs, arming our criminals with guns, trafficking innocent people and who are trying to kill us. We, as a brotherhood of the FC FCC, own it to the society to do better. We can do better. We must do better. That's Doug Stevenson's quote, and I leave you with that. Thank you, and have a great day.